Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this big idea video for English 101. This week we're talking about asking good questions. So without further ado, let's get started. So uh, if you're uh, old humble, you're 53 to 71 pages. And if you're new humble, I forget what the exact numbers are and I'll put those up right here. Uh, I'm looking down at my notes here as well, so please forgive the side down glances. Uh, when it comes to questions, the first thing you need to understand about these things, well, let's backtrack a little bit more. Uh, we have a, a writing process with four steps. The first thing is to ask a question. The second thing is then to go get research. The third thing is to decide on what you got and then present your answer um, in written form based on the work that you did in attempts to answer the question. That question should be debatable in some way. If it's just a general question, yes or no, that's not going to get you very far and honestly is not very interesting. Um, I remember watching uh, the movie Indiana Jones, the third one, uh, where Indy uh, is just about to get to the Holy Grail and he, and he confronts this chasm, this area that he has to, looks like he has to jump over. Uh, and he does this thing where he takes uh, a leap of faith and maybe we, we can put that video up here, Brian. Uh, what do you think? Is the video here? Right there? Okay. The leap of faith is something we do with questions as a way to say, I know this is debatable and I'm going to take a shot. I think it's interesting and I don't know where it's going to lead me, but I'm taking a shot. So when you think about questions, make sure you can take a leap of faith. And my air conditioner just went, just clicked on. Thanks, air conditioner. I guess that's what happens when you come outside. Look, I'm wearing my Star Wars shirt. So I moved a little bit further away from the sounds over there, but I'm sure you can still hear it. Uh, so as I'm looking here again, uh, down in my notes, it tells me that uh, after that part in the reading where it talks about taking a leap of faith, there's some sections about how to get questions. And so there are things listed like uh, free writing and uh, generating questions through use of who, what, why, uh, where, all that kind of thing. Also browsing the internet. All these seem like reasonable pursuits in terms of just getting ideas sort of churning in your mind about how to get to a good question. But I think where this chapter really excels is when, and I'm looking down at my notes, there's a section called Keys to Success, Ask a Smaller Question. And Humble is not lying about this. The smaller question you ask, the better it's gonna be for you in the work and better it's gonna be for me in the reading part. Because uh, really broad questions lead to really broad essays that aren't very interesting. So let's think about broad questions in this particular way. And I, and I got myself a little analog, uh, little analog deal here. So many of us have written in the past uh, about a subject called global warming. And I've made something called the global warming pie. Now within this pie are all the possible things that you could potentially write about with the idea of global warming. And I'm peeking, peeking around. What we really want to do is think about a way to ask the smallest possible questions, for instance, if our subject really was global warming. So here we go. We're talking about the smallest slice of the global warming pie. That's what we want to ask a question about. That's what we want to research. That's how we want to focus in our energies, not the whole pie, because if you do the whole pie, your essay is going to be all over the map, man. I mean, crazy, crazy all over the map. And that's not anything that you want. So as we think about asking questions for our work, we think, how can I make this small? How can I get the smallest possible question about a very interesting subject? And then I do my research on that small question on this very interesting aspect. And then you're going to get something interesting. I promise. Okay, so the Humble Journal is going to ask you a question about evidence. And it's going to bring up three particular things, backpack, car, and truck. What you want to answer is, which one of those containers would you like to be able to use in relation to a really small question? Now, here's the thing that I want to ask you all as I finish off this video, and I'm going to look to my notes. The question is, how much do you really want to research? And so my guess is your response is as little as possible, Brian, as little as possible. And I agree with you. When you get a chance to ask a really narrow question that is very interesting, you're going to be looking in like one particular area, right? I'm off camera. Sorry. I'm over here. You're going to be looking for evidence 
related to this slice of the pie. So automatically you're going to be excluding all of this stuff. So what you're going to be doing is looking for a narrower set of evidence. And there's not, obviously there's not going to be as much stuff. So you're, instead of getting 10 things that are really broad, you might get three or four things that are very specific that are going to help answer that question. All right, so that's all I have for this particular video on the big idea and asking questions related to our research. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.